There was an informal truce between us and the North in this city before the offensive. No one was expecting them to attack here. Now, they have set up their headquarters in the Imperial Palace. Today, you will see the Panther fight like never before. So why no artillery support? We've been getting the shit kicked out of us without any help from the big boys. Once you see the palace, you will understand. We were trying to avert any large-scale damage within the palace. But that may now be unavoidable. We will do all we can to reclaim it. Get our flag up that flagpole. Come on, follow me. First Sergeant Shepard, on behalf of myself, my command, and the Republic of Vietnam, I extend humble gratitude to you and your comrade for your assistance in the battle for the Citadel. The bravery you show in volunteering to aid us as well as the valor you display in your action on the battlefield will always be remembered by my countrymen. You will have our friendship for as long as the Republic stands. Sincerely, Captain Nguyen Van Bao. In January 1968, the North Vietnamese begin another major attack on the strategically crucial American combat base at Khe Sanh. As the Tet Offensive gets underway, these attacks intensify, and soon Khe Sanh is under siege. The NVA use rockets, artillery, and mortars to pound Khe Sanh with explosions hitting the base's fuel and ammo dump, and preventing all but the bravest of pilots from landing supplies at Khe Sanh's airstrip. Under cover of darkness, NVA sappers dig trenches and parallels to close their grip on the combat base. For four long months, the 5,000 defenders of Khe Sanh hold out against some 40,000 communist troops. Captain Dandridge, I know you're heading back to Quezon tomorrow and that conditions there are getting brutal. Hoss and I would like to be allowed to come with you. 
We can't leave the fight while the guys are under siege. And I want to know that my brother's okay. I know you could use us both. Sincerely, Dean Shepard. All right, men, we're approaching the airstrip. We can expect heavy fire. Charles has mortars and rockets positioned in the surrounding hills. They fire on the strip every time a plane approaches. If you've never prayed before, Chef, this might be a good time. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be, be thy name. This plane will not stop when we land. When the cargo hatch opens and the plane slows down, we will offload out the back. Watch your footing and watch the man in front of you. When you hit the ground, run to your left toward the trenches. We will be under heavy fire. Good luck, and I'll see you on the ground. Holy shit, what was that? That's just the landing gear. <laughs> Captain's dead! What the hell do we do? We ain't taking him with us! Sweet Jesus, why the hell did I let you talk me into this, Shepard? I could have been on a plane back home to Iowa. All right, this is your stop. When you jump off the plane, haul ass off the airstrip. Run toward the trenches. Do not run towards the mountains. Do that, and they'll be scraping you off the ground with a shovel. Good luck. Gotta get the hell out of here! Go, go, go! There goes nothing! Oh, oh no! Get off of this plane! Come on, let's move it! How's the nom treating you guys today? You boys seen Jamie Shepard? Nope. Don't know him. If he's smart, he's probably in his barracks laying chilly, man. Well, he ain't too smart. It's been great talking to you guys. You stay cool. Those 60s Marines, we got sappers inside the perimeter. We're looking for his brother. God damn it, I don't care if you're looking for Jesus Christ himself. Get on one of those guns. Your brother and his squad are at an LP outside the perimeter. They're being overrun. They just called in an arc light on their own position. Holy shit, we gotta get to them and pull them out before those bombs drop. Negative. Those men are gonna have to ride this one out. Sir, we're going for them. Maybe we can get them out of there before those B-52s come in. Oh, hell! Okay, follow me! You gotta push in there! Ah, shit. Wire! Ah, 
Fuck me! Get down! There's the road to the outpost. I'll try to radio those men and tell them you're on your way. You got no guarantees. You've been out of radio contact with them for almost half an hour. Now get going. You guys don't have much time. We'll look for you on the way back. Now get going. Come on, Chef. We gotta get to that outpost. Well, I can probably put this first on the long list of stupid things I've done in Vietnam. Later. Left flank! Those bombs are falling! There's no way we're gonna make it! Dean! We gotta get out of here! Those B-52s are- Ah! Shit! Shepard, pick his ass up and let's get out of here! against those P-52s. They'll be pounding the hell out of this whole area any minute. Let's go! This is some bad shit, brothers. We're running out of time. They're moving in. Watch the bamboo. There's a base! Come on, let's go! Hang in there, Jamie. We'll get you patched up in no time. Let's get out of here. Hoss and I caught our freedom bird out of Quezon two days later. The North Vietnamese took a pounding that last night on the perimeter, and our flight was uneventful. Jamie and the rest of the guys had to stay on for a few more weeks. My brother spent most of his time in a medical bunker healing up. Westmoreland was supposed to arrive and pin some medals on the guys, but he was a no-show. Greaser and Smooth humped those hills for two more weeks. Like a lot of short-timers, they had visions of dying a thousand different ways every day. Eventually, the rest of the guys got back to the world in one piece, but we were all changed. We had been forced to become adults in that little country in Southeast Asia that most people couldn't even find on a map. A lot of civilians don't understand what happened in the war. They don't want to understand. But soldiers understand. And even though I don't see the guys as much as I'd like to, I love them all like brothers. I know that no matter how much time and distance comes between us, these guys will always be there for me. <laughs>